Yeah, hi there. These comments are for A. I'm just using your initials for privacy purposes. And I got your email yesterday. I think I have all the information that I need now. So let's take a look at your email here. So you say, Dear Buck Off. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I notice when you're writing, you're not using a lot of punctuation or you're having a lot of problems ending sentences. So I'm going to make some corrections here. I hope you don't mind. She said, I'm writing down this email. And I feel really frustrated about my previous scores on TOEFL. So you need to end the sentence here. I just received an email now to check my last score. And it's still the same. How about a semicolon? It has not improved at all. Then you need to end the sentence here. I've taken five exams in the last four months. And my score, you forgot your verb there. My score is between 61 uh, to 68. I'm really tired. How about semicolon to separate the independent clauses? I don't know what to do anymore. So I need your help. Please, I'll send you my scores in, in detail in an attachment to see what I would put what I have done, not what I am done. Then you can say, moreover, I studied different strategies from different books and tutorials, right? There you go. So first of all, uh, you got to work on your punctuation and your sentence structure. You're not going to make a lot of improvements in your writing score until you figure out how to structure your sentences. Even an email is important. Everything you do right now should be geared toward helping you improve your TOEFL score. So even when you're writing an email, you want to be very careful and use all the right punctuation. So based on what you wrote here, I want you to go to Google. Here are some key words. What is a comma splice? Here's another one. What is a run-on sentence? Here's the next one. How do I use semicolons in academic writing? Study that, right? So get some information in those areas through Google, and that's your first step to helping you with your writing. So let's take a look at the results of your last few TOEFL exams. So August 4th, 2018, you got a score of 63. So you got 13 reading, 18 listening, 18 speaking, and 14 writing. Your next TOEFL exam, September 21st, 2018, you got a score of 60. So you had 13 reading, 16 listening, 19 speaking, and 12 writing. You took the TOEFL January, January 5th, 2019, so you got 17 reading, 19 listening, 16 speaking, and then 16 writing for a total of 68. The fourth time you took the TOEFL, uh, you got a score of 13 reading, 22 listening, 18 speaking, and 14 writing for a total of 67. And finally, you took the TOEFL April 5th, 2019 for the fifth time. And you got 67. So you got 15 reading, 16 listening, 21 speaking, and 15 writing. I hate to tell you this, but you are in TOEFL hell right now, right? I actually wrote a, I wrote an article about TOEFL hell uh, back in January, and you exactly fit into this situation. You're taking the TOEFL over and over and over, but you're not improving your TOEFL score. You need to do something different. The question is, what is it? What can you do? 
right? So my advice is, the way I see it, you're at 68 right now. You want to get around 90, right? So here's the, the first thing you want to do. Stop taking the TOEFL exam. Stop it. Don't take it, at least for another three months. Let it go. Start improving your academic English. This is the key to getting out of TOEFL Hill. If you keep taking the TOEFL over and over, I have a student right now, I'm not kidding you, he's taking the TOEFL 33 times. He's not changing the way he prepares for the test. He just takes a whole bunch of TOEFL exams and prays to God his score is higher, and it's not. That's your first step. Stop taking the TOEFL exam. Start improving your academic English. To improve from 67 to 68 to around 90, which is kind of what you're looking for, you're looking to get around 23 in every subtotal, reading, listening, speaking, and writing. Am I right? Okay, so this is my recommendation. You should follow, I have a three-month TOEFL course. It will help you, I guarantee you, you will improve your vocabulary, you improve your pronunciation, you improve your grammar, you improve your reading, listening, speaking, and writing, and you can start sending me speaking and writing practice every 24 hours that you're one of my online TOEFL course students, I will provide feedback on your pronunciation, speaking, and writing practice. This is the key. Stop taking the TOEFL exam. Stop it. Start improving your English. Go through the lessons in my three-month TOEFL course, right? After three months, take a full-length IBT practice test, right? I have a partner website that offers realistic, full-length TOEFL IBT practice tests. It'll give you exactly the same information as the TOEFL exam, but it only costs around $35, right? So after you study really diligently, for three months and you actually improve your English. That means when you're sending me the speaking and writing practice, you're consistently scoring 23 points or higher on those speaking and writing tasks, right? And then your writing, your reading and your listening skills are also better. So once you make those improvements at the end of the, the 90 days, take the full length IBT four hour practice test. If that score says 90, now it's time to register for the TOEFL exam, right? You want to take the TOEFL in three weeks. It's a waste of money. It's a waste of time. Start studying and improving your English. You can see from the email you sent me, you got a lot of problems. I already gave you a lot of suggestions just with that. If you learn what comma splices are, what run-on sentences are, if you learn how to use semicolons, if you learn how to use commas, if you can learn some of that stuff, you'll actually improve your writing score, right? It's not just about taking TOEFL exams over and over and over, or my friend, you will be stuck here. Is this where you wanna go? You don't wanna do this. This is not where you wanna be, right? Now, I'll put a link into the email, or I'll put a link into the YouTube video uh, that links you directly to TOEFL Hell. It'll tell you a little bit about what it is. I have different kinds of hell here. You got TOEFL Hell, you have Writing Hell, Speaking Hell, Reading, Listening Hell. You have the causes of TOEFL Hell. You have uh, uh, taking the TOEFL too many times, which is exactly what you're doing, most importantly, in the seventh uh, area, you will learn how to get out of TOEFL hell. And I'm telling you, your secret, the way you're going to get out of this misery is to go through the three-month TOEFL course, complete all those lessons, study about two to three hours every day for three months, and you will meaningfully, as God is my witness, you will improve your overall academic English skills. And guess what? Your TOEFL score is going to get better. That's how you're going to get out of this mess. All right? And I uh, thank you for your emails. I'm sorry to be so direct, but I wanted to illustrate the importance of, of certain things that you can do right now because there's a lot of people who are watching this video at YouTube, and you guys are also in exactly the same situation. Remember what I said. Stop taking the TOEFL exam. Start improving your academic English. Change your mindset. 
change how you're preparing for the test. I promise you, if you make these changes and you study diligently, you will get out of TOEFL hell, you will get your overall score, you will reach your target reading, listening, speaking, and writing subtotal scores. You will do this. All right, thank you.